hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you are new to my channel you are also welcome kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on your notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials so these are the measurements we need in achieving this drum suit the first measurement here is the tie circumference the shoulder measurements the bust measurements the waist measurements the hip circumference and we have the shoulder to crotch depth length, the ham hole circumference, the sleeve length, and the round sleeve, then the full length of the jumpsuit, which is 62 inches. The first step is to fold the fabric into two. Since this is a ball jumpsuit, you need to be sure of the wideness of the fold. And to know the wideness of the fold you need, you divide the tie circumference by 2. The tie circumference is 24 inches divided by 2. I have 12 inches. Then I'm going to add extra 9 inches to these 12 inches. But this 9 inches is not a standard. It depends on how wide you want the leg of the ball jumpsuit to be. So if you want it to be wider than what I have here, you can also add more allowances to that. The next step is to rule the starting line. Because of the crotch curve on this drum suit, I'll be marking 2 inches from this folded side. From this starting line down to the full length of the drum suit. Also take note that this vertical line is the center front of the front piece. Now the starting line will be called the shoulder line. So on this shoulder line, I'll place the neck measurements. The neck width I will be working with is 3 inches. I will place my tape on this new line to mark 3 inches. And the neck depth is 4.5 inches. The next measurement is the shoulder measurements. I'll place the tape starting from this new line to mark the shoulder measurement. The shoulder measurement is 14 inches divided by 2. That's 7 inches. I added half inch to that and that's 7.5 inches. Now I'll mark 1 inch below this point to get the shoulder slope. The round arm hole circumference is 14 inches divided by 2. That is 7 inches. I'll place the tip starting from this point to mark 7 inches. And this new line will be called the bust line. Now I'm going to use the French curve to create a ham hole curve. The next step is to place the tape vertically to mark the shoulder to waistline. The waistline for this client is 16 inches. The next line is the shoulder to hip line. The shoulder to hip line is 26 inches. The next essential measurement to mark is the length taken from the shoulder to the crotch depth. 
The measurement that I took from my shoulder to crush depth is 29 inches, but you know it's a bottle jumpsuit, you don't want it to be too tight. So I'm going to add extra 6 inches to the 29 inches and that will be 35 inches altogether. So instead of marking this horizontal line on this part of the fabric, I'll be marking it on the opposite part of the fabric. The next step is to mark the full length of the jumpsuit. The full length of the jumpsuit is 62 inches. The full length of the jumpsuit is 62 inches. I added 1 inch to the M and that made it 63 inches. Now, on the bust line, I'll place the bust circumference divided by 4. The bust circumference divided by 4 is 8.5 inches. So, I place the tip after that 2 inches fold as shown to mark the bust circumference. Plus 3 inches sewing allowance because the jumpsuit isn't too fitted. Now, on the waist line, I'll place the waist circumference divided by 4 plus 3 inches sewing allowance. And on the hip line, I'll place the hip circumference divided by 4. For the hip allowance, instead of adding 3 inches to the sewing allowance, I'll be making use of 4 inches. The reason I used 4 inches is because the hip part of this jumpsuit is really free. And I also want it to have an A-line shape. The next step is to place your curved ruler on the crotch depth line. So mark the crotch curve. On this crotch line, I'll place my tip to mark the tie circumference. The tie circumference is 24 inches divided by 2, that is 12 inches, plus 4 inches sewing allowance to the side to connect the point to the hip circumference as shown. So when we folded the fabric, we calculated the wideness of the fold. This simply means that I do not need to take the width measurements for the leg opening since I folded the fabric with the appropriate allowances at the beginning. Now I'll connect this point straight down to the tip of the M as shown. The next step is to take out the excess fabric at the sides.
So before cutting out the center front, I'll be adding half inch to the side for the seam allowance, which will be on the center front. Before cutting out the crotch curve, you need to make a second crotch curve below the crotch curve line in order to make sure that after sewing, the flaps stays balanced. So this is all for the cutting of the front panel. The next step is to place the front panel on the folded piece to cut out the back panel. So this fabric is folded into two to place the front panel on it. For the back panel, the next step is to mark the neck depth. I'll be working with a neck depth of 2 inches. And this will also be in a round neck form. And for the center back which has a zipper, I'll be marking a zipper allowance of 1 inch. the crotch depth i used two inches for a medium sized person but with someone with a very big butt you can use three inches the next step is to use a french curve to get the crotch curve of the back panel as shown So I'll keep marking the one inch I was marking initially at the top before I got to the crotch curve. So I'll mark that one inch straight down to the end. Then I'll also use a French curve to connect these two points together to form the crotch curve which is below the crotch curve line. Exactly the way I did for the front space. The next step is to trim out the back piece.
Now I'll secure the center front from the crotch curve to the point I want the neck slit to stop by half inch. And for the center back, I'll take the measurement of how long I want the zipper to be. I want it to be 18 inches. So from that 18 inches point, I'll secure it straight down to the crotch curve by half an inch. Alright, so I've secured the center back and I also left the zipper opening. So I secured the center front straight down to the crotch curve. But I stopped at this point because of the next slit. Now I'll spread out the front piece this way to take this to the sewing machine to secure the next slit by folding it in by half an inch in and also folding the other side by half an inch in. I've secured the next slit and the next step is to place the back piece on the front piece. To secure the shoulder slope by half inch. The next step is to secure the side. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine to secure the side by one inch. But in a case whereby you don't want the jumpsuit to be too free on your body, you can just place your tape to take your exact measurement, then hardly two allowances to that. After securing the sides of the jumpsuit, I will take the jumpsuit to the same machine to secure the flap by half inch. The next step is to fold the jumpsuit into two to be sure that the length of the jumpsuit is equal. Since the length of both legs are equal, the next step is to take this to the sewing machine to secure the M of the drum suits by folding it half an inch and further folding it half an inch.
The next step is to cut a pieces of this exact fabric in form of a bias tape to secure the neckline. And for the neck slit, which is on the center front of the jumpsuit, make sure that the neck slit is placed very close to each other before attaching the bias tape. The next step is to secure the zipper on the zipper allowance, which is on the center back of the jumpsuit. The final step to this tutorial is to attach the sleeve to the armhole of the drum suit. Alright guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful. You should give it a try and if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe, share and like my videos and also put on the notification bell to be notified when I upload new tutorials.